Hi, good afternoon. My name is Melissa Wensler. I am one of the Assistant Directors of Enrollment at John Carroll University. I wanna thank you to, uh, for attending this um, Q&A session for the humanities. Joining us this afternoon is um, Dr. Malia McAndrew, a uh, history professor at John Carroll and a senior at John Carroll and Cecilia Byrne. Uh, so we're happy to um, entertain the questions that you have. So please utilize the chat function um, to, to uh, ask your questions and um, looking forward to a nice robust discussion. So having said that, okay. So first question is, um, what options do I have with a humanities major? So what can I do with a humanities major? So um, Dr. McAndrew, maybe you wanna start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea of all of our humanities coursework, whether it is history or philosophy, theology and religious studies, uh, languages, is to give students the foundational skills that can be used in any major. Um, so you'll talk with your advisor a lot over the years about your individual career path, but in terms of the actual courses, the courses are there to teach you how to write, uh, to teach you how to analyze evidence, uh, to teach you how to think, and then there, you know, you can go from there on to really any field of your choice. Okay, great. Um, okay, another question. Um, so double major. So we got a question about a double major. Can um, they double major in humanities and what area sort of complements or makes the most sense? So we have a lot of students uh, who double major or even use minors in different ways. So maybe they are a major in economics and a minor in history or a major in philosophy and a minor in um, peace, justice and human rights. Are, aren't you doing something similar to that, Anne Cecilia? Yeah, I'm a political science and Spanish double major with a peace, justice and human rights minor. So definitely. Yeah, definitely so a lot of in different departments. A lot of creativity that, that students, I mean, oftentimes when you're in high school, um, it, it, you don't necessarily know, like, what is the difference between sociology and political science and history. And then once you get into these courses, you'll get a general feel for where your strengths are and, and where your general interests are. And so we see a lot of students just uh, creatively, even with the Bowler School, like we offer a five year MBA where you can literally uh, major in history and come out after five years um, with a master's in business administration. So certainly something to talk to your academic advisor about those interesting combinations. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, it's interesting that you mentioned the Bowler College because we have a question that says, what if I start off in the Bowler College as a business major but switch to humanities? How do they go about doing that and can they do that? So I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about that and a little bit more in depth. In your first two years at John Carroll, you're gonna be working on a core curriculum that all students take. So regardless of whether you want to go on to medical school, you want to go on to law school, you want to go on to an MBA, you want to go into the workforce, you want to go into a year of service, uh, regardless of what you see yourself doing after college, you're going to have to take those foundational writing courses, uh, those foundational courses that teach you about things like social justice that John Carroll uh, cares so much about. So certainly in your early years, you know, feel free to experiment. And as we said before, you might think that you want to be in business, but then you might find out that you'd rather be in the humanities. You might think that you want to be a classics major, but then decide um, that you love Spanish. So uh, definitely there is flexibility um, to explore and you shouldn't feel like whatever you're signing up on um, in orientation is like you're locked into that for four years. Mm -hmm. I mean, for sure. I, I mean, what I really like about, sorry, what I really like about, you know, John Carroll is that you don't have to declare a major until your second year. Um, and I know for myself, I actually came in for psychology and political science because I was thinking, you know, law degree, that would be really interesting in like the courtroom. And then I took a uh, psych 101 and I hated it. I was horrible at it. So I, I was able to kind of figure it out my first semester. This is what I like. This is what I hate. And I really had the, you know, the landscape to do that, taking a lot of intro courses, taking those core courses that then kind of led me on the path about, okay, this is what I want to do potentially for career. This is what my interests are. So I think it's also important to note that you don't have to decide the second you walk in the door, you definitely have kind of that time to really nurture and kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like. 
Yeah. Right. Ask yourself, what do I enjoy? What do I want to learn about? What do I want, want to spend a semester researching about, writing about, thinking about? And then when you go into your first year, uh, find core courses in those subjects. So we have a number of core courses that all students take. As I said, every student takes an intro to social justice course. Every student takes a course on the global world, right? Every student takes a course in the humanities. So in any of those categories, you can pick any number of disciplines to explore. So you could take a social justice course in uh, theology and religious studies or in philosophy or in Spanish. I mean, and so I, that's what I would suggest is that you use that core curriculum to dive into different subject areas and see what you're good at, see what you like. Because uh, I think it's true for most people in life. Sometimes you don't know that you're fascinated with something until it, it's in front of you and you have the opportunity to study about it. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I definitely had a lot of friends that changed their major once, twice, three times. Um, but, you know, after they kind of figured out that whole, like, okay, maybe I am not good at physics, let's not keep doing that. Um, yeah. You know, they kind of, you know, they kind of had that time to make mistakes, figure out what they like. And I, you know, as I said, that's always what's so beneficial about not having to decide the second you walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the core curriculum definitely gives you the time mm -hmm. to, to explore and, and to think. And, and I think a lot of times people feel pressure. They feel pressure from, yeah. you know, our outside culture to know exactly what you're going to do. They might feel pressure from parents or from brothers and sisters. But I mean, as I always say to my advice is you, you have to go with your heart. I mean, if you absolutely hate doing something, right, you're not going to be good at that field um, in the workforce. You're not going to be good at that field um, in the classroom. And so you want to find where your interests meet the world's greatest needs. That's kind of a, a Jesuit motto. And so where can you help the world and um, help your own path in life? And, and where do those collide? And so those are the meaningful discussions that you're going to have with your faculty advisors, you're also going to have with your friends in the dorm room. You're also going to have with the members of your sports teams. I mean, that's one of the great things about college is just the ability to be with other people who are thinking and going through the same type of journey as you and learning from one another. Definitely. That's great. Great information. Thank you. Good questions coming in. Um, so linked courses. Um, so um, this student, obviously, they uh, have, have read a little bit about our curriculum and our core. Um, so you both want to take a turn at speaking about the linked courses and give us a little background and what you think the benefits are of that. Um, well, I took a linked course my freshman year. It's kind of like a requirement you have to do here at John Carroll. And for instance, my linked course actually was kind of like an experiential learning was attached to it where I actually went to uh, the Northern Ireland Peace Building Program my freshman year. Um, and with that, I took a class in Irish literature and film and a philosophy class with self and conflict, I believe was the name. And what I really liked about it was these are gonna be people that are gonna go on the trip with me. So we were able to really foster a friendship between all of us throughout the whole semester, struggling through you know, our different papers, uh, watching different movies, stuff like that. And you know, we, also to have a, we also could really have a really personal connection with a lot of our professors. Normally these link courses are kind of smaller than like the big intro cl classes or not even big by John Carroll standards, but kind of smaller, normally like 10 people or something like that. So you're really able to foster these different connections with people that are, you're gonna go on a trip with or you're kind of interested in the same subject and the two classes really marry really well together. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about learning in life is that a lot of times maybe you'll be in college and you'll take a history class and you'll love learning about that. And then you'll take a sociology class and you'll love learning about that. And then you'll take an accounting class and you'll love learning about that. But sometimes it can be hard for your brain to like wrap together. Like how are all these things helping me to, to build myself up into the, the person that I wanna be uh, when I finish college? And so what these linked classes really try to do is help, to help you to make the connections between different disciplines. Uh, between different areas of study so that you're seeing these larger overarching themes and connections, mm -hmm. right? So for example, I teach a class on women's history and my colleague in the sociology department teaches a class on um, masculinity. So you could take those classes separately as standalones, but when we link our two classes together, we have the same students in her class and then the same students in my class and the classes are back to back. 9.30 to 10.45 and 11 to 12.15. And all of us are there together. 
And so that allows us to really think across disciplines and across subjects so that we can start to think about like, what is gender? How is gender constructed? How has gender affected our lives in the past? How will it affect our lives in the future? And so those are definitely questions that you could ask if you just took women's history or just took the sociology of masculinity. But by putting us all together, we help you to learn how to think across disciplines, how to think interdisciplinary. And then hopefully that skill, um, you'll, you'll continue to hone it on your own as you move up into your 300 and 400 level classes in whichever major you choose. Great. Yeah, those uh, link courses sound great. I, I find them fascinating as well. Yeah. Um, study abroad options. So this um, person would like to know about study abroad options and how does that fit in to make sure that you're staying on track and graduate on time. And so, um, Anne Cecilia, did you study abroad? Yeah. Okay, great. I you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So my sophomore year, I spent my spring semester in Madrid, Spain. And then my junior year, I spent, I spent my second semester in Montevideo, Uruguay. So when I was looking at universities in general, I knew that study abroad was my first priority. I did study abroad in high school a couple times. And so I told my parents, this is like the number one thing. Um, and I went to John Carroll and I really liked, you know, obviously with different Jesuit universities, uh, you know, passing your credits, different experiences, how academia works is very, um, it really married well together. So I was really, you know, pleased by the array that we had. Um, as a Spanish major, as a political science major, what was really nice is that my advisors were so willing to work with me. They understood that, you know, I came at the 300 level for Spanish and I kind of made a conscious decision that I wanted to basically finish my degree studying abroad because I kind of had the concept of if I'm learning a different language, I'd rather be in that place, in a location where they speak the language and I really delve myself into the culture and really kind of set myself apart, even like job wise, having all these international experiences since I want to go into international relations. So I made a very conscious decision, you know, starting out my freshman year that I want to map out my, you know, years at John Carroll, kind of focalizing on having these international experiences. And that's what's kind of nice about having such a small college experience is that your advisors and the study abroad office are just so willing to help you throughout the process whether it's applying, whether it's figuring out different visas and documents, or even while you're abroad, if you have a, an issue. I know I had a couple health issues abroad, and I know the, student, the study abroad office was really willing and very helpful in figuring out insurance and stuff like that. So they, it's a really, like, they do keep, keep you and they do kind of lead you along the way to, so that you do have a successful experience. But I do think it's also very dependent on the student about what type of program that they're looking for. So I know for myself, I wanted something very rigorous academically. I wanted to go to the best of the best universities, preferably Jesuit. So I kind of very tailor made my experience to what I was looking for. And I think that, you know, if that's what your, if that's what your goal is at John Carroll, you'll definitely find it. And we do have these prestigious universities that you do have access to all throughout the world. And so I guess that's what's nice about being in a small college is that you don't have to compete against 500 different people for the same spot. And you can really have like your top choice. And if they, you know, John Carroll doesn't have a program, you also have access to third parties that perhaps your financial aid can transfer to, which is how I was able to go to Uruguay because John Carroll doesn't have a program there. So if, you, you know, John Carroll, if they don't have a program that you're looking for, there's always an option for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'll add is um, that in addition to semester long, uh, study abroad opportunities, especially in the humanities, there are a lot of study tour courses. And I know, you know, you can talk about your experience with that, but we all, a number of humanities disciplines um, from history to languages offer um, like a two week or a three week immersion in another country with your John Carroll faculty member and other John Carroll students. And so, you know, for some people, they're like, I want to study abroad, but like, that's such a big commitment. Like, what if I don't like Switzerland? What if I, you know, I discover I don't, I think German food's horrible, right? Um, that you're going to have that opportunity to go someplace first, learn about that place, and then maybe make a, a larger commitment. Like, hey, I would like to study here, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe I want to study someplace else. I had um, a few years ago, the opportunity to go with a group of John Carroll students 
um, to, to Tokyo in Japan. We went for a three week uh, study tour. I know colleagues of mine have taken students to Germany. Have, we always have trips, uh, multiple trips to Italy going. Um, Aunt Cecilia, where did you go on your um, study tour? I went to Northern Ireland and then I was supposed to go to India this year, but then the trip got canceled. For, yeah, for obvious, obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, obvious, this, yeah. Coronavirus has taught us anything. It's how interconnected we are as a globe. So once the world gets up and moving again, I, you know, I do think that global experiences um, are an important thing for all, all college students to be learning about um, and, and to be thinking about. And I definitely recommend if you can do it your freshman year to definitely do, you know, if for me, it was a, kind of a taste to figure out like, okay, actually, I want to be here longer and kind of figure out like, this is what I want to do. This is kind of the location that I'm interested in going in. While I had other friends that were interested in doing a study abroad and they did a study tour and they're like, actually, I can't, like I miss home way too much. So it's mm -hmm. kind of can give you like a trial session about is study abroad right for me or is maybe having more of a short study tour more feasible for my personality, for my finances, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I think the flip side of this too is sometimes there's just a lot of pressure on that mm -hmm. some people feel like they have to study abroad, right? And it right. can be expensive. It can be not feasible for some people for a number of logistical reasons. Um, so, you know, that's where I would say don't discount the um, power of going very local as well. I mean, we can immerse ourselves in other cultures around the world and we can immerse ourselves in our local communities. There's a saying that I'm sure many of you have heard of think global, act local. And at John mm -hmm. Carroll, we have a number of experiential learning opportunities that take students from our campus to the communities that surround our campus. Um, into Cleveland, um, into the suburbs around our university and take students into nursing homes, into hospitals, into tutoring facilities, into um, refugee um, resettlement organizations. Um, and so you, you can think about getting an experience that is kind of outside of the box of the traditional classroom that happens close to home too, right? And so I, you know, I'll just put that shout out there for all the experiential learning that happens locally and through our Center for Service and Social Action and your humanities courses, in addition to all of the experiences that, that you can have and the wonderful, amazing experiences that you can have as a student studying abroad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also think, I mean, this is more particular to the Department of, of Political Science, but we have different experiential learnings. For instance, we have a European Union simulation where they have a conference every single fall semester in DC to kind of have a simulation of the European Union. You go through different, you know, bills and objectives. I know Model Arab League kind of has like different, mm -hmm. you know, situations like that as well. So, I mean, there's even just within the United States, like DC, stuff like that, locally within Cleveland, with, that you can connect your own studies and, you know, play a role or, or have a, 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 you know, have an experience maybe in a particular field, maybe international relations you're interested in, whatever, whatever and that could be a really nice option as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. That's such great information. Thank you. Um, okay, so somebody asked about, um, you know, getting involved. What did they, what do some of our students get involved outside of the classroom? So um, we kind of touched on a little bit of the service and the experiential learning. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what students get involved in outside of the classroom, because that is a, big, a very big part of the John Carroll experience is, is educating you as a whole person is what are you doing outside of the classroom? Or are you getting involved in to build those leadership skills? So. Mm -hmm. um, and Cecilia, maybe you want to start yeah. there and then Dr. McAndrew can chime in. Mm -hmm. So my freshman year, I actually was a public relations chair for environmental issues group. You know, coming from California, I was very gung-ho with like whole environmental science, stuff like that. So I definitely really stepped into one of my biggest interests, which is obviously, you know, environmental protection, climate change awareness, beach cleanup, stuff like that. And we even organized my freshman year to go to DC to protest for the climate march. So that was like my first year experience kind of at John Carroll doing some sort of like leadership role. And then um, I was also involved a little bit with our uh, Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. They had a um, kind of like a mentee mentorship program and I was a mentee at the time and I had a, a senior mentor and she actually helped me give a lot of, she gave me a lot of great advice about how to navigate John Carroll as a person of color, how to succeed at John Carroll, you know, coming from a different state 
stuff like that. So that was obviously incredibly helpful. And, you know, that center in general, I definitely am a big advocate for, for any student coming uh, to, you know, participate, be a part of that center. Um, then after that, um, I was also a part of Carroll Faith Communities at John Carroll. It's kind of part of campus ministry where you have like at least once a week, different kind of faith groups in a sense. I mean, I'm not really that religious. So um, I kind of went more for the connection with different students, talk about our faith a little bit, but also relate it more to our own personal lives and have conversations about this is what's bothering me at John Carroll, or this is what I love about John Carroll and kind of having that space to kind of debrief with people that you don't know or you do know or are fostering a relationship with. So I kind of did a, a whole mod podge of different things my freshman year coming in. Um, obviously my second year um, did study abroad. I did a European Union simulation. So I was definitely involved in different international relations kind of activities. Um, my junior year, I actually was the elections chair for student government. I kind of just saw an email and I was like, well, why not? I might as well do this. You know, my, one of my professors uh, recommended me and so they reached out and I did that for a month. And that honestly set me on this conjecture of, oh, maybe student government is actually something I'm really interested in. Um, and then I started abroad in Uruguay. And then my senior year, I really delved into all the things that I was so interested in all throughout my four years and really going for it. So I became a senator for the class of 2020. I was a committee member for the diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and then, you know, in that role, uh, for at least for the Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, I actually translated a number of their advertising material. Uh, so now they have material in Spanish for mm. different students coming in. Uh, that was a, a big thing for me. I did that for political science for Honduras immersion. And so I kind of made my translating services available for the school. Um, and then through that, I also was interning with an Ohio senator uh, in my second semester. So that was always really interesting to, you know, be in the realm of politics in Ohio where I really don't have much awareness or clue about what is going on, you know, being from California. So that really opened my eyes, you know, oh, this is a whole another realm that I wasn't really aware of. And now I really have an interest in. So I made myself incredibly busy, but I came out with such an amazing experience my senior year and I wouldn't change anything about it. And it really led me to, for instance, where I'm going to graduate school. So, you know, every single thing that I did at John Carroll definitely led to this moment of kind of having such a fruitful experience. Yeah, I, that, I would say, I would echo um, what you were saying. I mean, John Scar Ch Carroll is, I really like the size of John Carroll because it's mm -hmm. big enough that it's going to offer you all of the opportunities. You've got all the sports teams. You've got all the uh, Greek letter organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got all the extracurricular opportunities that are offered, but it's not so big that you're overwhelmed and you feel like you don't really know anybody, right? That it's right. easy, even outside of joining just an official club, to meet people and to interact with others and to form communities on campus. Because, you know, as I said before, you learn just as much in college from, from your classmates um, as, you, as you do um, from anything else. And so forming those relationships with your fellow John Carroll students um, will, you know, will be one of the highlights of, of your time here. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, Ian, Sissy, I should have probably let you introduce yourself. So you had mentioned you were from California. So, you know, um, somebody had asked how you decided to come to John Carroll. What, mm -hmm. you know, what was it that you um, found appealing about John Carroll? So tell us a little bit. And then also to um, follow up a little bit on what you are doing after graduation. Um, yeah. Because obviously what you have done in undergrad has uh, set you apart for this amazing experience you're about to embark on in the fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I get this question too often at John Carroll about why am I here? Why did I choose John Carroll? You're from San Francisco. Why would you choose Cleveland? And, you know, growing up in a city, I'm, you know, born and raised in San Francisco. I've, ne I've lived in the same apartment my whole life. So I really, you know, you get bored after a while when you turn 18. And so I know this is really hard to believe, but I was, you know, I want something, I wanted something completely different. Uh, when I was looking at colleges, I primarily only really focused on the East Coast. I knew I did not really want to stay in state, although I did apply to some state colleges, you know, for the heck of it. But um, I knew, like, I did not want to study anywhere near the Bay Area or California in general. And I actually had gone to St. Ignatius in San Francisco, which is the co-ed 
um, Jesuit high school here. And they had a Jesuit college fair. Um, so all the colleges came from the United States and obviously all the ones in California, big long lines. Uh, Georgetown, Boston College, stuff like that. And my parents actually and I went to something else strategically. We went to all the tables that did not have a whole lot of like activity. And we actually saw John Carroll. And, you know, as I said, study abroad was a big component for me. And I saw that they had different programs that I was like, oh, wow, like I did not know they had this connection here. And I'm really interested in going there. So I kind of, you know, made my list apply, got in, super, super excited, and I went to go visit all these colleges with my parents. I had gotten into Loyola University, Maryland, uh, Regis University in Denver, Colorado, John Carroll, and then a couple state colleges. And when I visited the different schools in Maryland and Regis, I just did not feel the same feeling that I had at John Carroll. You mean, you get on this campus and you realize, okay, like this is my place. I feel so comfortable. I love the students' vibe here. You know, when I went to John Carroll, they had a whole day personalized for my interests. You know, the tour guides, the people I had lunch with, it was just these people that I was like, wow, these people are inspiring. Like, I would love to be one of these people, you know, graduating from John Carroll, just so confident in what I'm doing. And just so, I had someone that I was having lunch with that she said, oh yeah, I want to be a Supreme Court justice. And you don't hear that just at some random college. <laughs> and so, especially like at a small college, you know, John Carroll, I mean, you know, being here in California, no one knows what John Carroll is. So going to a school, I was like, I don't really know if I want to go somewhere. Maybe people from San Francisco don't really know where that is. But hearing someone say like, oh, I want to be a Supreme Court justice or I want to do the Meet the Press Fellowship. You know, it just seems so wild to me at 18 that like this is a long term big goal dream. And so I kind of emulated a lot of these goals and, and these people. And I said, well, I kind of want to be I want to be amb as ambitious as these students are. And then I visited the Department of Political Science and I had a conversation with Dr. Peden and she, you know, was just seemed very interested in what I was interested in. And she gave me a book about Latin America and that I read over the summer. And I kind of just saw that the small details that all these professors, you know, gave to me or even the attention that he gave to me, the conversations that they tailor made to my interest was just so different than every other university. And so that really what, what sold me is sort of that individual experience where the professors really care about your interests and wanted to you succeed in, you know, and you wouldn't just be just a number. My dad went to UC Berkeley. My mom went to the National University in Columbia. And really you're, you're just a number, like no one, they don't take attendance. They don't care who you are. And here at John Carroll, you're not allowed to fly underneath the radar. Like your opinion matters and you as an individual matters in the classroom setting. And so that's what I really liked. And that's kind of why I chose it. And then as to graduating, <laughs> Yeah, and then after graduating, um, my fall year at my fall semester at John Carroll, you know, honestly, I was going to take a gap year and go to law school. Um, but actually, the Georgetown, the Masters of German and European Studies, uh, reached out to the departments of the Languages Department and also the Department of Political Science. They sent out an email to some senior saying, whoever's interested, Georgetown said that, you know, they'd be willing to pay a certain cost of you visiting them. And I said, well, I mean, I'm more interested in Latin America, but um, I'm really interested about connecting Northern Ireland and, and Colombia, for instance. So I said, you know, it kind of has a European vibe to it. I'll make it work. So I went to go, I went to visit um, Georgetown in October and I actually by accident found the Masters for Latin American Studies. I did not know that was a thing at all. And so I just kind of applied for the heck of it. But I mean, like, I wouldn't have even have known about the program if a professor had not sent that to me. So it's kind of like the universe kind of, you know, finds you and these opportunities in the weirdest way possible, because I mean, that was not at all that I thought my trajectory of my career would go into. And I, I actually, you know, fortunately, I got into both George Washington and Georgetown for a master's in Europe and not, not European studies, a master's in Latin American studies. And I just recently accepted my offer for Georgetown, but you know, it's just wild to see that. I really just took one professor saying, oh, this student has an interest in this. Maybe I'll pass along this information for the ball to be rolling like that, where now I'm going on to do graduate work at, a, at another Jesuit university, and it just happens to be Georgetown. Yeah, I would agree that the, the relationship with your advisor is key. And John Carroll giving you an advisor who is a member of the faculty who can really help offer you those types of opportunities because they know who you are, they know what your interests are, and they right. can link you um, to different things. So, 
you know, for example, I had a history student a few years ago who um, he liked studying history, but he didn't know what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. And so we were working on one of his papers and I was like, well, you can do the paper on anything. Like what types of things do you, do you like to learn about? And he said, well, you know, my dad um, is a physician and I've always been interested in science, but I don't want to like become a, a, you know, a scientist or anything like that. Um, so he started his paper and he, he did his paper on um, discrimination against African-Americans in, um, in medical testing. Um, and he read this book called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks it was about a woman whose cells uh, were, were used for a medical experiments. And so he got really into this topic and then got really into the idea of public health. He went on to work for Johns Hopkins University wow. um, in their public health office. He went on to, you know, for, um, for helping to advise on the ethics of using vulnerable populations in, uh, in scientific studies. I mean, so that's what I kind of say is like, we just went from like one class paper to a career. Mm -hmm. um, and so you really can go everywhere. And that's that long conversation you're gonna have with your professor over a number of years of finding like, what is the right place for you? I had another student who she was a peace, justice and human rights major. She was very interested in issues of food security. She was um, very interested in um, issues of poverty. And so she ended up also interning um, with an Ohio senator. Uh, she then, through that senator, ended up working at the White House after graduation. Oh, wow. um, and so then I got a free tour of the White House. So I liked that a lot, that she, she went to, to work there because I got into the West Wing. Um, but you know, there's a million different places you can go in life. Um, but forming those personal relationships with faculty members and also with advisors, who are getting emails about a lot of different opportunities and can just say, hey, I think you might be the right person for this, or you might be the right person for that. Um, that's where your, you know, your part of your future path is gonna maybe unfold for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. So, all right, I think we pretty much hit all of the questions. Um, I guess before we um, end, if there's any parting words that both of you want to um, Give to our audience. I think we've covered a lot. I think, uh, you know, I think you both did a great job of what the experience of John Carroll is and how the personalized attention really leads to um, students finding their path and finding their passion to help them become transformational leaders when they graduate. So, um, Dr. McAndrew, if there's any parting words before we um, say goodbye. Just, this is an exciting time in your life. Enjoy it. Uh, take it all in. And we can't wait to see you in our classes in the fall. Great, thank you. All right, and Cecilia. Yeah, no, just, you know, first of all, congratulations for getting into John Carroll. I mean, I won't be seeing any of you because I'll be off to <laughs> my graduate studies, but I do wish, you know, all, you all the luck. And I definitely think, you know, definitely have conversations with your advisors. If you like a class, definitely talk to that professor and make personal contact with them. Um, I know for letters of recommendation, at least for graduate school, that was really helpful that I already had personal relationships with a lot of my different professors. But in general, it's nice to unpack your life with your different professors that you love the subject that they're in. So definitely hit the ground running in the most positive way, be, it, but also be okay to make mistakes. It happens. It's kind of part of the learning process and it's kind of what makes college fun. And so, you know, have big ambitious goals and I wish everyone and all of you all the best. Great. All right. Thanks very much, ladies. I appreciate your time. And those that were on the um, audience, I appreciate you as well. All right.